Hello, folks. Dan Bird here for One Rental at a Time Nation with my midweek update for the stock market. And Mr. Zuber is away. I think he's on his way to New York right now. So he asked me to do a quick update and in particular, take a look at the Harris and Trump stocks that we talked about about a week ago. There were a few uh, stocks based on who would win the election should do better than others. Some it didn't matter, would do, do probably do well regardless. So I'm gonna take a look at those and see how they did today. Today was an unbelievably huge day with, on the market. One of the biggest up days in quite a long time actually. And 2024 is one of the best years on record in the history of the, of the market. So can this last? Well, why not? Why can't it last? We're in the best period of the year. The uh, From now until middle of January is the best time. We're, I think, heading now into the best um, stock market component or period of the year. And on top of that, the election was decisive. So that's the reason, I think, more than anything else that it took off. Regardless of who won, I think the market just wanted to, to see a decisive win. If it... Um, was very close and looked like it was going to be dragged out for another month or two, um, that they would spend too much time counting votes and that type of thing, then the market would not have liked that at all. But because the win was pretty decisive, extremely decisive, then the market just took off and never looked back today. So we're gonna look at that. We'll look at the uh, Trump and Harris stocks and a few other things. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Hopefully we'll do a quick one tonight. So here's my website for anybody interested, breakpointtrading.net. I have a free newsletter uh, right here in this box that I put out every Saturday. And I now have a YouTube channel. So what I'm doing on the YouTube channel is something that I call the daily scan. I'll, I'll do a market review to see what the, what the market did that day, have some commentary about what I'm seeing, uh, show a few charts that are in general looking at the market. But then actually, and I explain how I do this on some of the early videos, I have uh, a, I'll actually show you. So anyway, on my home screen, just click on that button right there and it will take you to the YouTube channel. So these are all, this is the last week, just started doing this. So this is the one today, to the moon, but will the 10 year stop the rally? We're gonna look at the 10 year here in a minute. Um, so they're about you know, 25, 30 minutes long but primarily I'm showing how to find good trading candidates. And then we are actually starting to track those and trade them as we go along. So bas basically teaching how to put together a process to reduce risk and um, improve your chances of winning in the stock market. One of the things that I have on, on my uh, website is this market bias. The market bias is basically, this just gives you a summary of it, but it's essentially a consolidation of a variety of areas. So indexes, sectors, industry groups, relative charts, commodities, metals, and currencies. And all that combined on a short-term, medium-term, and long-term basis. And anything that's uh, highlighted here shows you if it's changed that day, see how many green ones changed. These all changed from bear to bull today. So last night, yesterday, these were all bear. Um, but you can see in the market bias over here, the day of the election, um, it actually went up. And I said uh, on my video, my YouTube channel, I said that that could be the beginning right there. It wasn't uh, conclusive enough, but that could be the beginning of the end of your rally. And today, of course, we had a huge run. And you can see down here that the orange line is the short term trend. It is definitely heading higher. The medium term is starting to move up. But all of this is showing that the market in general is in a very bullish mood right now, which is great. So that's anyway, that's on the homepage. You can see it right there. If we look at some of the other charts, also the overall market, this is short term, medium term, long term. Again, right now we're in a green status. But if we look at the S&P, you can see that it has definitely broken out. This goes back to the uh, October rally that started this whole thing about a year ago, a little over a year ago. So you can see what the market has done in just a year. And this, these are Fibonacci levels as well as support and resistance. And it just broke out right now. So 
Um, one thing that I mentioned is that we likely are going to head to 6,000. We could hit 6,000 tomorrow. So we're only about 70 points away from it right now. And we did 146 points today. So we could easily hit 6,000 tomorrow. 6,000 may be too low. We could, we could hit 6,200 by the end of the year. <clears throat> we'll see. Markets don't go straight up, though. So don't expect this to continue going like this. This is two days in a row. Here's the day of the election and today. Um, markets don't go straight up. So expect this to consolidate, trade sideways, maybe pull back probably to the, to the support level. Um, but we do have the Fed meeting coming up on tomorrow, actually, tomorrow afternoon. And I think that's going to be another positive catalyst for the market. Um, it'll, I think it will keep the market moving higher, even if we get a little pullback in the morning tomorrow. Um, on the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ had not made the, it's all, back to its all-time high previously. It was trying to pull back right here, back to the support line in 19980 right there, but you can see today it now has broken out as well. So the NASDAQ 100 is now clearly breaking out, huge volume. Everything today looks like that, big volume, big breakouts all over the place. Not everything, but lots of things are breaking out. So very positive, very bullish day today. Uh, Bitcoin, Zuber wanted me to talk about Bitcoin. We'll look at that chart, kind of the same thing. Um, here's the Fibonacci levels for Bitcoin, and you can see it is now breaking out to a new high. Big, huge day today, up 9%. It uh, opened at 69,000 and it closed at 75,000. So 6,000 points on the day today. 6,376 actually. So huge day, another breakout again, these, they don't go up uh, all, the, all the time. It probably will pull back at some point, probably back to this support line. But it is also very, very bullish. So Bitcoin looks great. Um, if we look at the U.S. dollar, U.S. dollar also following the trend with everything else. Gold actually started to pull back. Bonds are pulling back. But the dollar had a great day today. So the dollar is moving up, and here's the 10-year yield. We'll look at this in a little closer view. But the 10-year also continues to scream higher as well, along with everything else. It just seems like everything's going up except for bonds and gold. Um, in fact, if we go to the charts page and we'll look at the 10-year 10 10-year 10 treasury, there you go. This is bonds right here, lighter color. And the 10 year, so if the Fed had its first cut right here, 50 basis points, it's going to probably have another one tomorrow. But usually when they start to cut, then uh, the yield goes down and, and bonds go up. But the opposite happened the last time the Fed cut. And as we're heading into another potential cut, the 10 year yield continues to go higher. Now it ended today with a spinning top do doji. And what that means is indecision. So it opened in the middle, it traded down, it traded up, and it closed right back in the middle, right where it started. So that's indecision. Say the bonds, which are inversely related, look the same. Uh, so we'll have to watch that. It doesn't mean it's going to reverse. You need to have confirmation. Don't just go by one particular indicator or candle. It needs confirmation, but we'll see if that could be a reversal um, or it could just continue higher. We'll see, we'll find out tomorrow. Uh, here's the S&P clearly going higher, the two-year going higher, the yield curve uh, solidly above zero now, and bonds versus stocks. Uh, obviously, stocks are the better place to be rather than bonds right now. If this continues, then bonds are really not going to do well at all. It, the opposite of what I thought was going to happen, but I think the bond market is trying to send a message right now and maybe sending a message to, to the new um, president-elect you know, you can see this happen well before the election. So regardless of who had elected, that we need to cut the uh, deficit. So we'll see if um, Trump can do that. Um, don't know. Or maybe Elon Musk will do it. Who knows? So anyway, that's the 10-year, and that was Bitcoin. Um, the other thing that I want to show you is the 250 and 200-day moving average analysis. 
So this shows you the percentage of stocks above their 20 day, 50 day and 200 day for the NASDAQ 100. I covered this on my YouTube channel a couple of days ago, but you can see right here, it was, it was falling, but every one of these now, stocks above the 20, above the 50 and above the 200, all of those are at 67 or 68. So 68, 67 out of 100 stocks now are above all of these moving average lines. That is very bullish. The bullish percent index is also moving up, but it's not at a critical level yet. And neither are these, by the way. So there's still room to the upside for this to continue to go. Um, so in general, it, and right here it shows you how it's broken out again. So in general, it looks pretty good. Now, one thing that was interesting when I was um, looking at some of these today, when I was looking at my market bias matrix and I, I got to the um, relative chart. So this compares one thing to another. And one of these compares the Magnificent Seven to the Russell 2000. So big cap tech compared to small and mid cap stocks. And I noticed, you can see right there, it's red. So it changed from bull to bear where everything else, almost everything else that changed today is green, changing from bear to bull. So I took a look at that because I thought that was interesting. And what I see now, whenever if this is moving down like it is, that means the Russell 2000 is outperforming the Magnificent Seven and significantly outperforming. So right now, yesterday and today, in fact, the whole week, this has just been moving lower, which means it is significantly outperforming the Magnificent Seven. And that is the place perhaps that the market is going to go to um, if I look at the ID, IWM, you can see right there, a huge day today, uh, really took off. Over one year, you can see again, it's hitting new highs, new 52 week highs, huge volume today. So this is, this is the one, this has been lagging everything else through the year. So this now looks like it's about to play catch up. So that one really might be one to watch and see how it does. All right, so um, on that point, I wanna quickly go through the Magnificent Seven because I pointed this out a couple of days ago that a lot of, those, a lot of them had failed to make breakouts. And so these big cap tech stocks really did, weren't looking too good. They, they, were, they had failed breakouts. They were trying and then they failed and started to, to pull back. So I wanted to look at them again. So here's Google. Google, there's the um, downtrend line. It actually broke out. It has not made it back to its highs, but it looks pretty positive right now. That's Google. Here's Amazon. Amazon had finally broke out. So there was the fail breakout. Trying to get up there, didn't make it right there. Tried again, pull back, but now it's broken out. Here's Apple not breaking out. Apple is struggling. Apple is, is kind of the going the opposite direction of most of the other ones, interestingly. It's not the only one of the Magnificent Seven either. Here's Meta. Meta also can't even get back above its 21 day, can't get back to its all time high level over here. Um, here's Microsoft, same thing. Microsoft came back up to the 50 day moving average, but it's still in the cloud and it's well away from this first level and it's very far away from its highs back here. So Microsoft is struggling. NVIDIA, however, finally did break out. In fact, it is a cup and handle pattern. So here's the cup, here's the handle. And what that means is it's got earnings coming up on the 20th. It's finally broken out. So it's got clear sailing ahead. It's at all time highs right now. <coughs> if you calculate the measured move of this, I'm just going to do a rough calculation. Uh, I've got about 100 points right there. And this is about 140 where the breakout is. So that's 40 points. So this should run to about 180 from that breakout. And that likely will happen because NVIDIA has a habit of running up into earnings. So, and especially this time of year, the best time of year for the market. So NVIDIA probably is just beginning its run. Um, the next one is Tesla broke out. Again, it had failed breakouts before. It is now broken out. Um, it will probably continue higher. Uh, Netflix was in, they had earnings right here, and then they had a sideways consolidation. This is a Darvis box. So it was consolidating sideways in the box, and it just broke out today. So that's the point. If you, anyone has read Darvis's book, that's the point where Darvis would have bought 
every time it moves sideways and breaks out and buy and to wait for it to move sideways again. So Netflix looks great. AMD looks awful. AMD couldn't make it above its downtrend line. Well below all of its moving averages. Um, most importantly, the 200 day right there. Well below the cloud. So AMD does not look good at all. SMCI looks awful. Um, this one <clears throat> was a high flyer. It was well over $100. In fact, it was up around 12 or 13. It, it had a split. And right now it's at 22 and continuing to head lower. Um, they, their auditor quit. They just had earnings. Actually, earnings is on the 12th. That could even send it lower. I mean, this one could end up going out of business. Who knows? Oracle. Oracle looks great. Oracle did break out. And Oracle right now looks like uh, one of the strongest ones in the Magnificent Seven and Friends. Uh, Palantir, of course, is probably the strongest one of all of them. It broke out on earnings right there, and it continued up today. So Palantir looks great. Uh, Arista Networks sitting right at the resistance line. I expect this may break out tomorrow, but the market probably is going to consolidate. So this one could pull back and form a cup and handle, a little cup and handle right there. We'll see. Or it could just continue to break out tomorrow. Um, the MACD, the, the momentum looks like it's just moving up too. So Arista might be ready to go. Let's look at where's earnings. Okay, earnings are on the 7th. So that's tomorrow. So earnings, um, earnings might be the catalyst that pushes it up. Uh, Broadcom, again, fell breakout right here. It's trying to get back to that breakout line. It's not quite there yet, but it may make it up there. Earnings for that is not till December. Eli Lilly looks awful. Eli Lilly had a, a double top right there and just cannot make it back up there and continues to go lower. There are multiple signals back here on Lilly that uh, signal it was a good time to get out of it. Sitting right on the cloud and couldn't go back up and just started dropping through. So Eli Lilly right now is uh, not looking too good. It's down near support, so it may stop its descent here soon. But huge volume down here too on these sell-offs. So that's not a good sign. All right, so there's the Magnificent Seven. Um, uh, that's that's what things look like. We'll, uh, we'll see how it goes the rest of the week. Um, the last thing I wanna cover is the, let's see, the election stocks. So we went through these about a week ago. Uh, there were two groups, the stocks for Trump and stocks for a Harris win. And I just want to go through each group and see how they're doing. So first, we're going to start with the Trump side. So we'll just go through each of these very quickly. These, some of them are industry groups, some of them are sectors, and some of them are stocks. So just pay attention over here on the far right. This is the defense industry group. Looks great. Here is aerospace. Had a nice day. It's above the 50-day moving average. Financial sector. Huge day today for financials. Um, here's uh, heavy, heavy construction. So construction is doing really well. Here's JP Morgan, huge breakout on JP Morgan. Lockheed Martin, uh, they had earnings back here and now they're trying to recover and get back. It, they still have some work to do. Uh, Exxon Mobil, starting to move up, has not come back to its high yet. Here's Nucor. Nucor had a really nice day. Now it's above its 200 day moving average. This is Steel. Steel actually did really well. Um, Geo Group. I talked about this when I first covered these, and this is one that I did not know about, but they actually uh, run prisons. And the article said that this one could do well with a Trump win if Trump is going to start deporting um, immigrants. So you can see the day of the election. It just started to move up. In fact, it went above its 21-day moving average. That was the signal that it might continue to go. And look what happened today, up 42% today. So this is one to watch. Uh, it, it won't go straight up, obviously. Um, so it could pull back some more. And if it does pull back, it might be a good opportunity to add in. But that one was really interesting. Now, there's a couple of stocks that, that are on both lists that could do well regardless of who wins. This is one. This is in the heavy construction area, which is which has done well. It's it's been ever, ever since their earnings back here. It's just been going higher, day after day. This is one that has been on the my top ten list. That's on my website. 
I publish three top 10 lists and update them every week. And that's the list that I, that I use to uh, run my scans against. But this one has been on the top 10 for quite a while and it broke out today. Caterpillar, also heavy construction, broke out today. Coinbase, huge breakout today for coin. You saw what happened with Bitcoin. So Coinbase did well. Costco, eh, Costco is just moving sideways. Um, that's a, more a consumer name. Here's uh, oil, Chevron looks good. Goldman Sachs, again, financials look great. Johnson & Johnson, not so good. Not J&J, &J, not, too, not too impressed with that one. Um, here's Merck, also not so great. Merck uh, has been on a steady downtrend. So I don't know who recommended that one in some of the articles that I showed, but that's not one I would have picked. Uh, Morgan Stanley, Stanley uh, doing great. Uh, Northrop Grumman, just beginning the defense sector. Pfizer also. So all the pharmaceuticals really don't look very good at all, even still. Powell, this one looks great. This is one that, that is on my uh, daily scan that I've talked about. It's uh, it's also consistently been in the top 10 in my top 10 list. Just about every week, it continues to be in the top 10. In fact, if I go back here uh, on the charts page on my website, and you can see the top 10 list down here, here's all three of them. And anything that appears in both, like Palantir did, um, is highlighted in green. The Powell right here is in the IBD group. It's also in the relative outperformers. Now, these right here have to outperform their own industry group by more than 10%, and they have to outperform the S&P by more than 5%. So they have to satisfy both of those in order to make this list. And Palantir is on three lists. But what you'll notice is Powell is on two of the lists. That's why it's yellow, but it's also down here on the top 10 uh, S&P small cap names right down here. So I also do the top 10. I update this every week. Top 10 um, large cap, mid cap, and small caps. And then I consolidate all of these lists together every single week as we go through. And I put them together in a list right here. And this is what I run my scans against. So all these stocks, there's 240 this week. You can see it was updated on the first. I updated every weekend. Um, these, are the, these are the lists. This is the list that I run my scans against to uh, identify stocks to add to, the, add to our portfolio every week. All right, so that's, um, let's see, where was I with Trump? I think that was it. All right, so let's look at, um, well, let, let me go back. How was that, Powell? Uh, there, there's Powell, here's Raytheon. Again, defense stock just starting to make a run. Vulcan Materials had a nice day, but it ended with a um, shooting star, which is a sometimes a reversal candle. Uh, trend reversal, but it has to have confirmation the next day. So that's not one that I would add based on that candle. I would wait to see what it does. Energy sector did great today. Uh, Zeta is one that should do well in both, regardless of who won. And it's had a great day as well. All right, that's it for Trump. So let's take a look at the Harris stocks. And there's something really interesting in these that I'll point out. Um, Let's see, here's Harris. So we'll just start here. Technology for Harris did, did good today. Industrial sectors, I talked about that. It actually broke out, so that did well. This is the one, renewables. Renewables t did terrible today. And uh, a lot of the renewable stocks followed suit. They didn't do too well either. So um, like, for instance, um, First Solar, just as an example, First Solar sold off today as well. <clears throat> so all the renewables didn't do well. This is a uh, pharmaceuticals, didn't do too good. Sterling is actually in heavy construction, so it did do well. Sterling's another one that's uh, consistently appeared on the top 10 list. You can see how the chart just keeps going up right there. Rivian, not too good. So... Um, electric vehicles didn't do well today. Nextera Energy, it had already been going down. It gapped down even more today. Microsoft, we talked about before, struggling to get back. This one here should be good in either. So it's in both lists. Broadcom, trying to make a comeback. So this is uh, semiconductors. This one here is renewable partners. So again, 
gap down today. This one uh, did not do well after the election. We'll see if it continues to, to move lower. Uh, canopy growth, so marijuana. Uh, marijuana. Some of the marijuana initiatives did not get voted through on some of the state ballots. So this one did not do well at all today. Cigna, again, a pharmaceutical company, uh, actually a healthcare provider. CrowdStrike, uh, just going sideways and still just going sideways. Finally got above its 200 day moving average. So it might continue to move higher, but it's just sort of consolidating sideways right now. DR Horton, so home builders not doing too well lately. And, and DR Horton just reported to, by the way, on the 29th. So that was right here, this gap down. So they're continuing to move lower. Eaton, uh, this is industrials. And industrials, as I mentioned, did pretty well. Fort, Fortinet is software. It's going sideways. Healthcare did not look good. Materials, this is general mining. It's actually breaking out, so that's not too bad. Palo Alto Networks looks great. Technology actually did pretty well on both sides. Powell appears in both lists. So Powell did well. That's um, industrial suppliers again. Tilray, another marijuana stock. Uh, also did terribly and actually broke through its support, major support lines. So it's it's down to $1.50 a share right now, down 13% today. So marijuana in general after the election did not do well. United Healthcare, uh, black handle. So that means it, it gapped up and then sold off all day. And Zeta, which was in both lists as well. I think that's the last one. So that gives you a sense for uh, both sides. Trump and Harris, looks like the Trump group of stocks are in general doing better. Looks like the two areas that have suffered the most are marijuana and um, renewables. So uh, we'll see how things go as we move forward. Hope that was interesting for everybody. Thanks for joining. Have a great week. And uh, hopefully I will be back with Mr. Zuber on Sunday. We can do a group uh, session. But if you're uh, interested in checking out my daily scan, just to see how I can I pick stocks and how we track them. And I've set up a portfolio and a, um, actually I'll show you what it looks like. I set up a portfolio that we track them every day. Looks like this paper trade worksheet. So I'm actually trading these, but you can use this uh, for paper trading. I actually put it on the website um, and there's where we are. You can see the, these three up here, these first three, uh, the first one was the 29, so about a week ago, that's Powell. And I actually show how I will identify where the stop should be, where the initial stop is. So these three were just added today. So you can see this, usually when they just get added, the stops are further away. But as they move up, then the stop gets moved up, hopefully to break even. And at some point, we'll fill this in with 14 names and all of them, hopefully, the goal is that they all are positive. Even if they get stopped out, they still make money. But I don't expect them all to end up making money. I expect some of them to get stopped out. So as they do, we'll just continue to manage this, this group. And if they get stopped out, we'll, we'll move them down here to close trades. And we'll find some more. We'll look for some more. And I explain how to do all of that uh, on the YouTube channel. So if you're interested in that, uh, that's right here on the web page. Just click on that button for the YouTube. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Hope you have a great week and uh, hope you voted. Everyone, that's everyone's uh, entitled entitlement to vote. It's um, that's why we are such a great country. So I encourage everyone to do that, even in the midterms. Don't just make it for the president. Vote in the midterms as well. All right. Have a good week and I'll talk to you soon.